Greetings to you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. It's a pleasure to be asked to encourage you all this morning. Um, we've been, Nottingham has been back in the building for about four weeks now, so we haven't really been online, but it's a privilege to be asked to be called back to encourage you this morning. Um, on Wednesday, when Pastor Vassal asked if I could share a word, I was wondering what to share. As you always do, you think, what could I encourage God's people with? Um, and uh, for a couple of weeks, I've been going over David and just reading about David and the wonderful works that David did. And I was taken back to when our young people in Nottingham was looking at David, 1 Samuel 30, and when David had to recover all. And um, I was like, that's a, that's a good scripture to go over, a good scripture to give and a good word to encourage. And our young people did Dare to Pursue. And we did this for about three years because we felt like we had lost a lot of our young people. And Sister Sharon and ourselves went through this. And every year we said, we'll, we'll bring it to an end. But we came to the third year and we were still doing it because we felt like we had not finished it. Um, so that came to me. And I thought, that's what I'll encourage the, our brethren on this morning. And last night, as I was reading it, I said, yeah, I've got that firmly placed. So that's what I'll encourage with. And then as I was sleeping, the Lord took me through it again. I had to wake up and read it. And I'll just summarise the story. We know that David came back to his city. And when David came with his people, he realised that the wives and children were missing. They'd taken them to captive, captivity by the Amalekites. And when I was reading it, I could see that there was lots of different seasons that David and the people were going through. So the first season that he went through was that he was they were all they all started to weep and the bible tells us that they wept quite strongly and there was a deep anguish and upset that their children and wives had been taken and then they took this out on David and then David then began to go into quite a deep depression and an upset because of how the people wanted to stone him and in all that anguish and upset David then said I'm going to encourage myself so he encouraged himself in the Lord and then he spoke to some priests and then he then inquired of the Lord because he had to find a solution and I said Lord how fitting is this that we're going through this pandemic and our seasons might be up and down we might be going through loss and um, depression loss financial loss loss of identity just because of this this pandemic that we're in and I thought David is going through so many seasons within this scripture and it took me to Ecclesiastes 3 that there's that there's a time for everything and under the heaven there is there is seasons and purposes and that we must we must try and go through these seasons just like David so David then he met this um he took his troops and half of his troops fell off because they faint they couldn't cross the brook and i thought what another season to go through disappointment the people the army that he had with him could know half of, i think it was 200 couldn't cross the brook so he had to go with 400 and then he met this young person i don't know if he was young but he met this person that was from egypt and it was another season where david had to show um, pity and comfort and kindness to him so David fed him and it was all yeah, to this point where God wanted him to be because God the Lord had told him that you will recover all and, er and you will lack nothing and everything will come back to you but I thought how how good it is that we can live like that and be like God's children and just do what God has called us to do if God has told us to do something we can go through these seasons and still find Jesus in it and still be kind and still the Bible in Ecclesiastes it tells us there's a time for war, there's a time for peace, there's a time for weeping, there's a time for joy. And through this scripture, we see that David goes through those different waves. And I was thinking from the beginning of this year, I've had to bury three of my grandparents. And I feel like I've not had time to mourn them individually i've had to mourn them collectively and just go through the seasons and the waves that i'm in and i've had to count on jesus and really rely on the lord and say lord this i don't know what's happening i've got no control of this i can pray to you i can encourage myself and i can inquire of the lord but your will is your will and my grandparents they came over to the uk and they did what they had to do and they they must have had seasons where it was like should i go should i pursue should i dare to pursue or should i stand back and and if the lord had told them to go when the lord told them to come over to the uk and live the life that that he's promised them there must have been some upset there must have been some like worry and fear 
as to how they would do it, but they held on to the Lord and they held on to that encouraging word. So my encouragement this morning is no matter what you're going through, no matter what your season is right now, encourage yourself in the Lord, walk with the Lord, talk to the Lord, find someone to hold your hand, find someone to be there with you. Um, there's, there's always going to be something that's going to hold us back. But we see that with David's journey in find, trying to recover all, he went through so much, but he just rolled with the seasons. He didn't let it hinder him. He leaned on Jesus. He leaned on the Lord and carried on doing what he had to do. And then it tells us, if I just find the scripture, um, in verse 17, it says, And David smote them from twilight, even unto the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them, save say 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled so it tells us that David was fighting from twilight to evening that tells me that David was skilled he might not have realized that he was being prepared for this moment to be able to fight from twilight to evening and I believe that's what we need to be doing during this time we need to focus on our homes our families our young people our children and we need to say Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but maybe you're preparing me for something else. And maybe we don't have to fight like David fought physically, but we do have to fight spiritually. And I believe prayer, fasting, obedience, kindness, loving people is the way that we're going to get to win this war that we're in. I know that we're in a pandemic, but I was also reading yesterday that the the Spanish flu was a massive pandemic. So this is not the first time that this world has known a pandemic. It may be the first time we have known a pandemic, but the world has seen pandemics before. And it's very important to look back on our history because looking back on our history gives us perspectives for our present and our future. And we know that we will win this battle. We will win this race if we keep close to the Lord, hold his hand and walk with him. We've got nothing to fear. So my encouragement to you is to know your seasons that you're in, walk with Jesus, let Jesus guide you. You know when David found that young person, that person who was an, the Egypt person, David could have cut his head off because David was skilled in stuff like that. But David knew the season. David knew that this person I need to talk to I need to get into his head I need to get into his heart so he can lead me to that camp where my children and family is so that's what we need to be we need to be discernment we need to understand what God is talking to us and we mustn't rush ahead and know when to fight and know when to peace know when to be silent and know when to speak so I pray that that this has encouraged you because it's been encouraging me and sometimes I think Lord I had something to say and and I read it again and you've took down a different avenue I've never looked at it this way where I've looked at it from the seasons times and purposes but I just pray that that it has done something to you and it resonates something in you I know that the loss that I felt there's been times when I've wanted to go into a depression and I've actually sat there and contemplated I wonder if it would be easy if I went into a depression and I would sit there for five minutes and think well how do you go about being going into a depression because it's not in me to go into it I don't know to be depressed and I thought, how can the enemy tempt me with trying to be depressed? And then the Lord speaks to me and says, Charlene, get up. You know this is not you. And you find yourself speaking to yourself or singing. Or you even find yourself um, giving a word to someone else. So when I said I'm going to go into a depression, I went downstairs because I'm in a shared house. And um, one of the young girls that lives here, she said that she feels like giving, taking her own life. And I thought oh, well, I can't, I can't go into depression because now I've got to rise up. Something has to rise up in me so that I can encourage this young girl that she doesn't take her life. So don't let the enemy defeat you. Don't let the enemy take away what God has built in you. And God is preparing you just like David. He's preparing you to win that fight. He's preparing you to call the young people in. And I believe right now is the time when, G when God is really calling for young people to stand up. I was even thinking about my brother because we nearly, he was quite ill a few weeks ago. And it came close to us losing him. He went into a seizure and it was a prolonged seizure, something we've never known before. And I was away at the time. And my prayer was, Lord, it is, Andre is your son. He, it's your will, whatever happens in his life. But I know, Lord, if my brother goes tonight, he is not saved. He does not know you. So how am I going to feel knowing that at times I go to church, I pick up young people, take them to church. But every time I do that, I walk past my brother's bedroom and don't give him an encouraging word. He needs to be saved just as much as anybody else. So I encourage you just this morning, 
just to take hold of what God has said to you and just to and walk with him and hold on to him. His, his, his hands never changes. His mind never changes. He's with you and he's just guiding you. So there are my few words with you and I just pray that it's blessed you. I pray that you're comforted and I pray that you just hold on to his everlasting love and just walk with him and keep him. In Jesus' wonderful name I pray. Thank you.